I'm going to talk today about Candid, a new decentralized identity system developed by faculty and students at IC3 in collaboration with colleagues at JP Morgan Chase. Candid takes aim at two of what we regard as the naughtiest problems involved in making decentralized identity a reality. I'll talk about those, but first I just want to talk about very briefly about what decentralized identity is. Many of us have had the experience of opening a financial account online. Often that involves validating your identity by means of a video. You show your face, and in front of your face, you hold up an identity document, like a driver's license or a national ID card. But you don't do it like that because then you're covering essential information on the identity document. And no, you don't do it like that because then you're covering your face. You don't want to do that. Yes, you do it exactly like that. Hold still. Or you might do it like this. The point is that this process is awkward and cumbersome and vulnerable to fakery. It's also error prone. Decentralized identity aims at solving these problems and a few others I'll talk about later. The basic idea is as follows. If a user wants to obtain an identity document, what she does is generate a key pair, public key and private key. She then goes to an authority known as an issuer who will send her a digital version of her identity document bound to her public key. Now, if the user wants to prove her identity or prove various things about herself, our user Alice here, for instance, might want to take out a loan and therefore needs to prove she's at least 18 years of age and maybe lives in a particular state and so on and so forth. What she can do is send her identity document to the bank and prove that this is her document by use of her private key. And then she gets her loan. This approach has been embraced by a number of different industry sectors. An effort like the Decentralized Identity Foundation counts among its members dozens of companies in a variety of different sectors, security, payments processing, blockchains, and so on and so forth. And this is just one of a number of decentralized identity initiatives. Why are people so interested in decentralized identity? There are a number of different reasons, including the two that I mentioned earlier in the talk. But the larger vision involves users being empowered to manage their own data beyond mere identity documents, things like healthcare data, for instance. In principle, the issuance of decentralized credentials can be made easier for modestly resourced organizations like aid organizations to issue and therefore can be useful in providing identity documents to those who might otherwise not have access to them, stateless persons, refugees, and so on and so forth. It's also beneficial to enterprises because if users have taken control of their own data, then enterprises are less subject to liability in the case of a breach because they're not holding PII they would otherwise be holding. But there are two critical problems swept under the rug. The first is the problem of credential issuance. I said in my example that Alice goes to an authority known as an issuer to get her credential, but where's this authority going to come from? In particular, a decentralized identity ecosystem isn't going to thrive unless there's a community of issuers, but you wouldn't expect issuers to start arising until there's a robust decentralized identity ecosystem. In other words, we have a chicken and the egg problem, and it's unclear how to address this using conventional tools. The second problem we talk about today is swept under the rug is the problem of key management. Remember that for this system to work, users need to manage their own private keys. And we know from extensive experience that users do a terrible job of protecting and backing up their keys. Just one data point. It's estimated that some 4 million Bitcoin worth over $40 billion, at least my last check, have been lost forever, gone up in smoke because users have lost their private keys. This is a real problem in a decentralized identity system. Candid takes aim at both of these problems. In order to explain how it works, I need to talk briefly about a key building block, a system called DECO. 
To describe what Deco does, I'll tell a little story involving Alice and Bob, our canonical characters. Bob has developed a new token called Bob's Bubble Token. He wants to conduct a token sale, but he wants to do it responsibly. He only wants to sell the token to users who have the financial wherewithal to invest wisely, safely. He only wants to sell to people who have balances of at least $5,000 in a bank account. Alice wants to participate, so she looks up her bank account balance, and lo and behold, she has more than $5,000, which is great. So she goes to Bob and says, I qualify to buy your tokens. Bob's response, of course, is great. Can you prove it? How's Alice going to prove this? She could send a screenshot of her bank account balance, but of course, that can be tampered with. She can basically declare whatever balance she wants. Alternatively, she could send her username and password. Bob could now check her account balance, but this is a bad habit to get into if Alice wants her balance to remain above $5,000. We observe, though, that Alice is communicating with her bank, almost certain, over a secure channel, over TLS. And that means that her communication with the bank is cryptographically protected. So it seemed like we could leverage TLS in some way to authenticate her bank account balance to Bob. But TLS has a problem. TLS key exchange uses public key cryptography and digital signatures, all the things you would want to authenticate data. But it does this to exchange symmetric keys for a session. In other words, when data is sent from the server to Alice, it's protected using a key that Alice also has. That means that Alice can essentially forge data coming from the server. So forwarding information to Bob would be no better than sending him a screenshot in effect. What Deco does is allow Alice to log into a server using TLS and then prove things in zero knowledge to another party like Bob about the data she gets from the server. But wait a minute, didn't I just say on the previous slide that TLS can't do this because of the use of symmetric keys? I did. But Deco sidesteps this problem using a trick that we refer to as a three-party handshake. Obviously, I'm not going to have time to get into the details, but I want to convey the intuition to you, at least. And I'll talk about Alice and Bob now in terms of prover and verifier roles. Here's the idea. Alice and Bob, when interacting with the server, use TLS, conventional TLS, but they generate a shared key for the session. The server has this key K, but neither Alice nor Bob individually has it. Each of them has a share of this critical key. Because they've shared it, they can do things like decrypt data for Alice, but Alice does not know the key K herself, so she can't unilaterally forge data from the server. In collaboration with Bob, though, she can prove things in zero knowledge. And we do this using two-party computation. Again, I won't have a chance to get into the details. But the critical observation here is that all of this is transparent to the server. As far as the server is concerned, it's just communicating with Alice. It doesn't know that Bob is in the loop. It's unaware of the fact that the key K on the client side has been split. And therefore, no modification to the server itself is required. This is very nice, of course. With Deco in our pockets, as it were, we can see now how Candid works. Candid involves the use of a committee, a collection of servers or nodes. You can think of it as a permission set, like the kind you'd use in a permissioned blockchain. Uh, although you can extend candid to permissionless settings as well. We assume that some fraction of these nodes are honest, some majority fraction. The nodes in the candid committee have essentially two jobs. The first is to verify deco proofs. And the second is to store secrets on behalf of users. Now, suppose Alice wants to go get a credential. Suppose she just wants a credential proving she's over 18 so she can take out her loan. Here's what she does. She communicates with a collection of servers that have an authoritative record of her birth date. The Social Security Administration, DMV, a bank, for instance. And then she can use Deco to prove to the committee that the birth date recorded on these sites 
is such that she is over 18. These committee members now, if they agree, then indeed Alice's proofs are correct, they verify correctly, can generate a credential saying, I saw proof from Alice that she's over 18, I'm gonna sign this credential. What have we done here? We've turned legacy web servers into issuers. This using Deco and Candid, we can turn any web server, any existing web server in principle into a Candid issuer, into an issuer of credentials. And in this way, we address the chicken and the egg problem. We don't need to stand up special purpose issuers. We just use existing authorities. One important feature of this process is that because Alice is using zero knowledge proofs, the process can be private in the sense that Alice only reveals to the committee the information she wants placed in her credential. For example, she doesn't need to reveal her birth date. She just proves that her birth date, again, is such that she's over 18. We have legacy compatibility. As I mentioned, there's no need to modify existing web servers. The Social Security Administration doesn't even need to be aware of the fact that this process is going on. No changes are needed to its servers. And because we can draw on essentially any existing website that's TLS enabled, HTTPS enabled, which is most of them these days, we can generate a wide variety of credentials or attestations using these techniques. That addresses the problem of credential issuance. We also have this problem of key management. Remember I mentioned that users are prone to losing their keys. How do we address this problem? The key management approach taken in Deco actually looks very much like the credential issuance process. What Alice does, our canonical user here, is store her private key with the committee. And she can do this in a secret shared way so that no individual node has access to her key but collectively the nodes in the committee know her key and they can reconstruct it on her behalf. Then Alice registers a bunch of accounts on providers of her choice. And now if she loses her key, what she can do is go to the committee and prove using Deco that she can log into these pre-designated accounts. And so she provides a proof that she has successfully authenticated to these accounts that are bound to her key. The committee verifies these proofs, and if everything checks out, they can provide Alice with her key. Again, because the key is secret shared, in, at no time do nodes in the committee individually gain access to her key. Now, we could, in principle, use OAuth to do exactly the same thing. The reason we don't advocate for this in Candid is that OAuth has some disadvantages with respect to privacy. In particular, an OAuth token will leak a user's identity with the target website, an identifier, which can often be converted into a real world ident identity. So with the use of OAuth, there's the risk that Alice betrays her real world identity to the Candid committee, clearly something we don't want. So I'll wrap up there a little early. If you're interested in learning more about Deco or Candid, I'd encourage you to visit my website where you'll find two papers, uh, one on Deco, which is going to appear in ACM CCS later this year, and another on Candid, which was recently accepted to IEEE Security and Privacy and will appear middle of next year. Thank you very much.